in our lifetime we find people who change our life in your life how many people have actually changed your whole life your whole perspective your whole way of being your whole way of living your whole look and view of life in my life there's only been three women outside of original family and women who changed my life because in our families of origin we learn all sorts of things from our mother our father our sisters our brothers and our extended family through all the experiences that we're brought up with as a child through our childhood but once we step outside that door towards college and once we move ourselves into college we have three or four people who are along our lifelines our life force journey and whatnot that change our living obviously in college that's going to be your college boyfriend or your college girlfriend or your college friends and those groups and social groups and those organizations those sports groups that you hang out in but once we move beyond that and we go into the business world of manufacturing or retail or wherever we find a place to lay our hat and produce a living we are impacted by those we work with I had definitely made some job choice mistakes and that certainly certainly changed my life but in the spaces of where I made the most of my living it was with my late wife and after she lost her interest in me and after the Lord called her back to be where she needs to be I found the one I really found the two but those two came into my life based on the most profound prayers I've ever prayed in my life it proved to me in those moments of time that prayer works not only for me but probably for you over the course of time though those women's impact on my life have remained in my heart in my soul and of the two at least one of them has the right to become my wife and claim that if she will the challenge we have though is that there are players in the world that can turn ahead there's a player in her life that has ruined her life and that sort of makes people broken and yet again it makes them open I can remember waiting three years through a somewhat chaotic relationship of someone dealing with the loss of their life partner and I set aside some gifts every Christmas for my friend and her children and each year God would say no not this year so I'd put them in my closet but every single day year after year I'd walk in my closet to put my clothes on like most people do when they have a master closet in a master bedroom after my late wife had gone and openly I'm looking at them and it's a few days before the holidays are supposed to kick in and I'm like I am so fucking tired of looking at this stuff I want my friend back so I made my way across town to a space that I only recently learned about and I stood myself in my best leather jacket my best outback hat in sort of a cold weather day on a porch with the full intention of asking somebody to marry me although I hadn't seen them for some time I had made my mind up I had set my heart on these I think that's even a music in, in an old and some sort of country western song but the reality is in life we have those moments of time when we know that someone's right for us and after I lost that one I ran into another one that was also coming in on prayer and I met that one in a marvelous place and a marvelous space and a marvelous energy fair and that one became a fast friend of mine and we were almost inseparable for two months of time until people in her life just like people in the other one's life started to interfere it's always amazing how a pastor's wife can fuck a man out of the next lifetime that he's supposed to get. It's always amazing how a pastor of a major church can interfere with a woman who's about to lose her husband because he's that much of a player and ruin what God's planned for her in response to that situation coming on to her. So what I'd like to say to the pastors of the world is stay the fuck out of God's plan. You are not the matchmaker of the universe and if you matchmake my wives out of their opportunities with me I motherfucking will kill you because God has made that child that person that individual so much a sign in my life that I can tell you every single day since that time and that loss I get a sign for those those women you see it's not how much they're caring for me at this time and their marvelous little lives that they produce on what did they produce their lives on prayer? Did they produce their lives on God's guidance? Did they produce their, their lives on uh, meditation? 
and thoughts from Jesus Christ, or have they produced their lives and their lifelines at the present moment in time based on the loss of lifelines and the thought of replacements that would allow, just like anyone feels, other people to feel like they did the right choice or allow them to feel like, well, my old player might see this guy and will feel a little threatened by him. You see, everybody's got a psychology, everybody's got a need to be, and everybody has to know when it's time to go. And sometimes we rush into a relationship, and everybody knows this, after divorce, the next intimate relationship you have is not going to last. It's the rebound guy. And maybe you got several rebound guys, and maybe you become a little bit too loose for, for uh, loose as a goose, as they used to, to joke about when I was in school. But openly, that's not the point. The point you failed to ask yourself is, who did God align in my life to be the pickup guy for the rest of my life? The one that will love me, the one that will help me, the one that will support me, the one that will never defy me, the one that will always guide me, the one that will rebuke me, the one that will help me. Did I say that already? And the one that will never strive to embarrass me in public, in my family, and the one that will stand up for me, not only at the altar of life, whether it's in a church or just on the side, or just say, okay, I'm just going to take your name to see how this feels. Or did you steal that player from somebody else's house? 